Are you looking for a high paying technology job, but you're just not sure which one to pursue? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to share with you the best paying and fastest growing jobs inside of the IT sector. Now, this information comes directly from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And every year they put together these reports that talk about the growth in specific job types and verticals. So for this particular video, we're going to focus on the IT space. I've narrowed down six of the best paying and most in demand jobs based on the statistics that I found on the BLS. But before we get into the six jobs, if you're ready to reclaim control and start to act like the CEO of your career, make sure you sign up for my free newsletter. And in it, I share concise, actionable tips on how to write a resume, interviewing tips, and how to approach your career with more strategy. So make sure you check it out if you're in an active job search or you think you might be in one. Keep in mind, it's absolutely free. Hope to see you there. Okay, so the first job that I came across was information security analyst. Now, an information security analyst plans and carries out security measures to protect an organization's networks and systems. So essentially, they're looking for security issues inside of an organization. And these are very common with consulting firms, a lot of financial services companies will hire them, and then anybody that really has an internet driven business, which is pretty much everybody these days. So security is kind of the buzzword right now inside of the IT space, and the statistics back it up. We can see that the 2022 median pay is a healthy $112,000 per year, which equates to about $53.85 per hour. Now, keep in mind, this is going to vary from company to company and industry to industry, but that's the basis for what you probably should be getting paid if you're an experienced information security analyst. Unfortunately, in most cases, this job is going to require a bachelor's degree, so it might be something to add to your list if you don't have one yet. The good news here is that the information security analyst job market is projected to grow a whopping 32% over the next 10 years, and this far outpaces the rest of the market. And putting those into more hard and fast numbers, you're looking at approximately 17,000 job openings per year. So it's a pretty good place to be if you think you wanna get into an IT space and you don't wanna get into programming. So if you're looking for a new career path in IT, I would seriously consider information security because it's just a, such a strong job market. Number two on the list is we have computer and information research scientists. So basically information research, this job pays more than the last one. So that's the good news It's 136,000 is the average pay for the role. However, it does come with some stipulations. It does require a master's degree because this is going to be more of an analytical research role. So the barrier to entry is going to be a little harder to get into and it's reflecting in the salary. Now, the total number of jobs in the market is significantly less than the security analyst position, but you still have 36,000 total roles. And because there's going to be less people who qualify for this job, there's going to be a little less competition when you're applying for these jobs as well. So if you can position yourself to be a strong fit, you have a better chance of getting in this one. They are expecting an employment change of 8,300 additional positions for this role in the next 10 years. So if you want to get that higher level of education, it might be a really nice niche for you to park yourself in. Number three on the list is computer systems analysts. And this job does pay a little lower on the list because the barrier to entry is not quite as high. It's 102,000 average, which still isn't something to sneeze at. And the hourly rate breaks down to $49.15 per hour. Now a systems analyst looks at the organization's current systems and makes efficiency improvements and changes. In most cases, it will require a bachelor's degree. The good news is, is that it doesn't always need to be a bachelor's degree in computer science. You can get a liberal arts degree in a lot of cases, and if you have the technical competency, you can still move into this job. And even though the growth isn't as strong as the last two, there's still a very healthy job market. There's a lot more people sitting in these jobs today, 531,000, so it absolutely dwarfs the last position and there's expected to be a lot more jobs. Even though the percentage is lower, only 10%, and I say that only because that's still way above the industry average, you're still looking at an additional 51,000 jobs. So you might have a little bit more competition, but you have a lot more opportunities. Might be something to very seriously consider if you're looking to get your foot in the door in the IT space. Next up, we have database administrators and architects. Now, there's a pretty big difference between an administrator and an architect. An architect obviously designs the systems, but if you are an architect, you're truly a principal level architect, you can expect to command a much higher wage range than is probably reported here as the average. So keep that in mind for this role. What the database administrator does is they create and organize systems to store and secure data. If you think about it, almost every major company has a lot of data that they have to manage, and that's where the database administrator comes in. They create interfaces and systems that help companies manage these massive volumes of data and turn it into something that's actually usable and useful. Now, it's important to note that a lot of companies will require a bachelor's degree for this 
And the number of years of experience will vary from company to company and obviously the level of the job. But it is possible to get in without a technical degree if you have the right experience. The nice thing about this job type is that there are a lot of people who are currently sitting in this role. Most companies need this type of job. And you see it reflected in the total numbers of people who are sitting in the role today, about 150,000. And it's projected to increase by 8%, which maybe is a little bit smaller percentage wise, but it's still, again, above industry average. And we're looking at adding about 12,000 maybe 13,000 additional jobs over the next 10 years. So it's pretty serious growth. Of course, no list would be complete without software developer and every major company has a team of software developers working for them. So the demand is certainly going to be there probably more so than any other role inside of the IT or the traditional IT space. So we also are going to lump in quality assurance uh, analysts and testers into this group. Now, of course, leveling plays a huge role in the amount of money you can expect to earn as a software developer. If you're a principal level engineer, you're going to earn a lot more money than somebody that's a junior engineer. And you also have to take into account the industry or the industry size and the company that you might choose will play a huge factor in the amount of money that you can earn. And as you can imagine, a big company like Google or Netflix is going to be able to pay a lot more than a small startup. And we also have to factor in geographic region. The Bay Area obviously will outpay rural Iowa, but the median across the entire country for this job type is 124,200. Now I can speak on bigger companies in the tech space and they will pay closer to the 200K mark for very experienced people. In some cases, even much higher than that, depending on the company. But 124 seems about a pretty good average for most of the country. That breaks down to $59.71 per hour. And the nice thing about this job is that while the bachelor's degree is preferred in a lot of cases, I've seen plenty of software developers get hired who didn't have the bachelor's degree, but they had a high degree of technical competence. You have to really know what you're doing to get past those technical assessments, but if you can get past that barrier or that bar, the sky's the limit for you. Now, obviously the number of jobs open or people are currently sitting in is gonna be much, much bigger than the rest of the jobs on this list. You're looking at nearly 1.8 million people that are currently sitting with a title of software developer inside of uh, inside of the United States. That you're seeing a forecasted 451,000 additional jobs that are supposed to come online in the next 10 years for a whopping 25% increase in the demand for this role. So that's much faster than the national average, and it's a great place to be if you're a software developer. I put a little asterisk here and say, I would wanna be differentiated if I was a software developer. I would probably be focusing on some emerging technologies like AI kind of comes to mind. Maybe niche yourself into the cryptocurrency space or mobile apps where you can really carve a name out for yourself and not be just the same as everybody else. So a little bit of strategy might go a long way here. But nonetheless, software developing is still a very popular choice. You just have to get a little bit of experience under your belt. And finally, we have web developers and digital designers. So this would be your UI, UX folks, people who would design the interfaces when you log on to websites like the Bureau of Labor Statistics. You would be most likely looking at the work of a web developer and a digital designer. And so the barrier to entry is going to be a little lower than a software developer. The technical competency is going to be a little lower as well. So it does reflect in the, the wages. 80,700 is the average across the country for this job type, but it breaks down to $38.81 per hour. Bachelor's degree, again, I would say, is it required? It's preferred for sure, but it's probably one of those jobs where if you have enough skill and competency, you can probably get away with not having a bachelor's degree or having an unrelated bachelor's degree. So I don't think that's a barrier to entry. You'll likely find a lot more entry level web developer roles than you will software developer roles as well. And there's not nearly as many people sitting in these jobs today. We've got 216,000, which is still a lot of people. But the good news is, is that they're looking to add an additional 34,700 people over the next 10 years. And that, that's good for 16% change or increase in the demand over the 10 year period. So again, it's going to be much higher than average. So if you're somebody that likes a little bit more of the design side of things, it may be a little less of the heavy coding. Web developing might be a really good choice and it's a very strong career path. So there's the six highest growth, highest wage jobs in the IT space. Now, I'll probably put an honorable mention that machine learning and all this AI and emerging tech is another place that I would be carefully looking at if I was looking to get into the IT space. I want to be on the forefront of where the industry is heading and making myself as invaluable 
valuable as possible, getting those niche skills could really set you apart and make your job search that much easier. But if you find yourself in a job search that you're struggling with, that's actually something that I specialize in. I've got a website called lifeafterlayoff.com. I share my deepest and most intimate knowledge in the form of some training courses. The first one is called Resume Rocket Fuel because we have to have a great resume in order to get those recruiters to take notice of us to get us into the first round interview process. So if you're struggling to get those interviews, check out that Resume Rocket Fuel course because it's usually a resume problem, especially if you have all the skills and you're well qualified for the roles that you're applying to. Once you get your foot in the door though, it's up to you to market yourself effectively so that you can land at a job offer. And that's exactly what the Ultimate Job Seeker Bootcamp does. It takes you from job search all the way through each round of the interview process. And ultimately we try to get you to that offer so that we can negotiate the best possible terms for you so that you don't leave a dime on the table. But if you wanna skip the recruiter altogether, personal branding is where it's at and targeted networking. So you wanna leverage the power of LinkedIn. And if you don't know how to do that, I actually created another course called Unlocking LinkedIn, which teaches you how to skip the recruiter altogether, jump right to the front of the line and get your name seen by the right people so that you can get through the hiring process more quickly. So check out Unlocking LinkedIn if you don't know how to leverage LinkedIn to its fullest capacity. And of course, I offer some limited private one-on-one coaching if you think you need a little bit more personalized help. Anyway, if you're in the IT space or you're looking to get in the IT space, this is pretty exciting time. There's a lot of job growth and this is one of the highest in demand job types out there. So happy job hunting, good luck, and we'll see you on the next one.